Well, hello everyone. Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. I'm so excited for this episode because it's going to be a continuation in our autopilot gardening series. So as you know, we already talked about seeds you can plant and pretty much just forget. We talked about mulch and how it uh, suppresses weeds. So we have to do less weeding later on. And in this episode, I'm going to talk about raised beds. Now you might be asking yourself, Luke, you talked about raised beds. You've grown in raised beds ever since you started here on YouTube. What's new? What? Well, not a whole lot, but I want to bring it all in so I can bring all these concepts together into the topic of autopilot gardening. So let's talk about raised beds and how they apply directly to an autopilot garden. So soil quality means a lot to an autopilot gardener. When you have good soil quality, this means that the soil is fertile. This means that the soil is loose and aerated. This means that the soil is well draining. And this also means that the soil is rich with life. These do so much for a garden, but it does so much more for an autopilot gardener because you're allowing these systems within the, uh, within the soil to really do the rest of the work for you. Because when you have a fertile soil, you have to fertilize less. When you have soil that's loose and airy, you have good root penetration. And that means the, the plant can grow nice and large for you without having to, uh, to struggle as much with tilling and other things like that. You also have soil that drains really well, meaning that it deals a lot less with flooding. And that also leads, a lot, uh, leads you to have to fertilize a lot less because there's a lot less um, uh, leaching that occurs throughout the, soil, uh, throughout the soil column. Another thing that uh, having really fertile soil does is it is rich with life. And rich with life meaning good bacteria, good fungi, good microbes, which helps to create a symbiotic relationship with the plant, helps acquire locked up nutrients in the soil, make them plant available so your plant can access those nutrients to grow, and also helps fight for your plants. The immune system of a plant is very, very closely connected to the health of the soil. I Meaning if you have healthy soil, you're gonna have a healthy plant. And so you have all that together, but how do we retain that quality? Raised beds. Raised beds helps to lift your soil off the ground so that it's contained within a box, meaning you don't step on the beds, there's no compaction, meaning your soil can stay nice and loose. You get to choose the soil that you want, meaning you get to choose compost or bagged soil, whatever one you want, and you throw it in the bed, meaning you can choose the highest quality stuff available to you. And once it's inside that bed, it will retain its quality because it's not, uh, you're not having negative uh, effects being put on that soil. Like I said, you're not stepping on it, meaning you're not compacting it. It can drain freely through because it's not compacted. So it holds its aeration, it holds its good draining capabilities. You can use compost and you can use uh, bagged soil, either or compost will have the most amount of good bacteria in it without any pre-inoculation at all. You can use bagged soil and, and then inoculate it. Um, but you can use compost, which has the good bacteria, and good bacteria need air and they need nutrients to survive and thrive. Another thing about raised beds, because we are talking about autopilot gardening, is all about the labor that's involved. It's things like weeding. Because your soil is looser, it means weeding, if there are weeds, happens a lot easier. You have a lot less struggle to pull the weeds out. It also means that because the soil is looser, the plants are going to grow faster, meaning that as we'll talk about in future episodes, as the plants grow up, they're going to overshadow and they're going to outgrow those weeds. They're going to beat the weeds at their own game, meaning even less weeding pressure. Another thing is because obviously it's all about the labor, you know, and the labor involved and, and how much labor I want to put into my garden or how little labor I want to put into my garden, I should say. Having raised beds means I have to bend over less, meaning that the amount of labor that I have to put in is less because I'm not hunching all the way over. It's a lot easier on my back, so I can move a lot quicker. I'm a lot more productive. And also, like I said, because I'm uh, a lot more productive, I can weed a lot more weeds in a lot less time. So that all kind of comes together into why raised beds is such an incredible uh it's such an incredible system to have in an autopilot garden, even though it's a system that so many gardeners are using already. I wanted to take it, I wanted to take all those components and fit it in to that topic of autopilot gardening. So I know this one was quick, but I really hope that you all understand the concept of why I'm doing this 
as we kind of talk about uh, autopilot gardening as a whole. So I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. If you have any questions, post them in the comments box below. We're gonna have a lot more videos coming out on this topic. And so I hope you're enjoying the series. I hope you're sharing with your friends uh, this series because I really do think that uh, the, the, the winning ticket, the golden ticket to gardening is loving it. If you don't love it, you're not going to do it. And one of the big things that turns off a lot of gardeners is the amount of work that people say you need to put uh, to put forth to have a successful garden and a beautiful garden. And I can safely say that last year, implementing all the methods we're all the methods we're going to talk about this year, I spent maybe at most two to four hours per week in the garden. Uh, and that was mostly taken up by things like harvesting, things like uh, watering if I needed to, which we'll also talk about ways to reduce that in an autopilot garden, so stay tuned for that. But uh, watering if it needed it, uh, you know, barely any weeding if it needed it, and then also things like harvesting, which took up probably most of it, and, uh, and the rest was just pure enjoyment. So I can safely say that if you all try this, uh, these methods or this method alone, you're going to save yourself a lot of work in the long run. So I hope you all enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. And as always, this is Luke from the MI Gardener channel reminding you to grow big or go home. We'll catch y'all later. See ya.